Okay, so um, this is a piece of syntax from Unit 19, um, pages 459 and 50. So it's about the attraction of the relative pronoun, so-called. Um, a funny metaphor to use about grammar. All kinds of fun things happen with grammar. Anyway, let's look at the sentence that Delisi wrote down so beautifully. Um, it's not a beautiful sentence, but it's illustrative of a point. Um, first words are hoi stratiotai, the nominative plural of the soldiers, uh, nominative plural masculine, of the word for soldiers, so that's the subject of the sentence. The soldiers, axioi esir, remember what axios means, worthy, and then it often governs a genitive, worthy of, okay? So we've got a genitive with it here, axioi esir means are worthy, and then we get the genitive tone, athlon, athla, Athlon, rather than non athlon, neuter noun of the second declension means a prize. Um, so the soldiers are worthy of the prizes, neuter plural. Now we've got ha, the relative pronoun ha, um, which is neuter plural, nominative or accusative singular. So with a relative pronoun, the rule in Greek is the relative pronoun has the gender and the number of its antecedent, but the case that it should have its own clause. So ha is either nominative or accusative because that's the clause that's determined by a clause itself. It's n neuter and plural because that's the case and the, uh, that's the gender and the number of its antecedent. So what noun for it is neuter and plural? It's athlon, the word for prizes, which is the neuter noun. So the, the word ha, which we're going to translate which, refers to the prizes. The soldiers are worthy of the prizes which. Now, when we come to the relative clause, we have ha hoi politai didoasin. <coughs> is an explicit subject, hoi politai. And so ha has to be a direct object, can't be the subject of the verb which is besides plural, didoasin. If ha were the subject, the verb would be singular, because when the plural subjects take singular verbs. So ha has to be the direct object, and it's in the accusative case. So it's going to mean soldiers are worthy of the prizes which the citizens give or grant. Okay, that's normal Greek practice, right? And that's predictable and translatable. But um, funny things happen in Greek, okay? Um, and we do similar things to this in English. Well, the first thing that, that happens is that the ha there, which should be accusative, can be attracted is the expression, into the case of its antecedent. Um, so instead of having ha there, you can write this, see, you have hon, okay? Um, the circumflex, sorry. It's okay. Was... So you have hon, which, which is going to mean the same thing. The soldiers are worthy of the prizes which the citizens grant. But it only happens, okay, this attraction of the relative to the case of its antecedent, when the case that it should be is accusative, okay? So it's not the soldiers are worthy of the prizes whose citizens they give, right? Something like that, which doesn't make any sense. But we translate it the same way, of the prizes which the citizens give. And the hon is standing in for the direct object because its antecedent is genitive. It also works if the antecedent is dative and the relative pronoun should be accusative. So this is a, a phenomenon that happens in a very restricted way, um, but we're going to relate it to another phenomenon that we're going to look at. And that's found on the next page of the blackboard. Can I go across there? Okay, so there's the rule when the relative pronoun in the sentence should be accusative, and its antecedent is either genitive or dative, the relative pronoun can be, it doesn't always have to be, but it can be attracted into the case of its antecedent. That is, it can be genitive or dative instead of accusative. Okay? All right? Now, oh, here's, the, here's the other phenomena that we're talking about. Estin, hostis, tu ton tima, period. So the word estin at the beginning of a sentence, the non euclidic form of the verb to be, can mean it is possible or there exists. Okay? And then we've got hostis. Um, we have a relative pronoun there, whoever, which has no antecedent. Okay? Um, and and uh, so what do you do in a case like this? 
there is whoever honors this is not English or Greek, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what you have to do to make sense of the sentence is supply the missing antecedent. In other words, Greek can ellipse, because of the fact that you're dealing with grammatical cases, it can ellipse the case of the antecedent. The antecedent has to be something, you're, the one that you're going to invent has to be masculine and singular, right? Because hostis is singular and masculine. Mm -hmm. So you have to say, is there, or there is someone who, right, some person, mm -hmm. some male, who honors this band, person. Right. right? So the fact that you can suppress the antecedent is similar to the fact that you can have a sentence in which you attract the relative pronoun into the case of the antecedent. I'm not totally sure why, but they're, they're comparable phenomena. Um, you can lose the antecedent altogether, or you can, in effect, have the relative pronoun lose its identity in that of the antecedent, right? They're like two sides of the same thing. In one case, the antecedent prevails over the relatives. The antecedent's case blots out the relative pronoun or shades over the relative pronoun's case, and in the other case, the relative pronoun eliminates, because of its case, the the, the expression of an antecedent, the need for an expression of an antecedent. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. All right.